to proceed. Uh, so far I've introduced the int function and the rand function and one more function that we're going to need, and one built-in function we're going to need uh, to work this is the count if function. And the count if function counts uh, within, a, within a list. It will count the number of uh, items that match a certain criterion um, and give you a result. So for example, just uh, here we have these numbers that I started out with, 54, 3, uh, 45, 45, 78, 4, uh, 67. Um, so I could say over here in cell B1 equals count if open parentheses and count if takes a range in criteria. So let's say the range is going to be um, A1 through A5. That's going to be the range. I'm going to press the F4 key to convert this range to uh, absolute references to cells because I'm going to drag down this formula and I don't want to shift the range as I drag it. So uh, no matter what, I'm going to always refer to this range. Um, so that is the range. And the criteria, I could say, for example, how many of these, um, well, let's, let's give an example, I have the value 54. And that's going to give me the value 1 because one item here has the value 54. Let's say I had um, two items that had 54. Let's say A1 has 54 and A4 had 54. Oops, that was 64. 54. Then the value in here is going to be 2 in B B1 because there are two items within this range that have the value 54. You can also specify um, more complicated conditions in, it, in, the, in this um, in quotation marks. So for example, I could ask how, how many of these items um, are greater than or equal to 45. So I so see we have 45 here, and so we have um, 45, 54, actually all the items are, are greater than that. Um, but let's say I said how many items are greater than 54. So that's one, uh, that's going to be two items are greater than 54, or greater than or equal to 54. That'll be one, two, three, four. So how, how do I do this? I'm going to go to count if, um, and instead of saying 54, I will say in quotation marks um, greater than or equal to 54. And that's going to give me a 4. It's going to evaluate the condition within this string um, to see how many of the items in this range, in this list, are greater than or equal to 54. And you can read it more about the counted function elsewhere. Uh, this is, uh, I'll make one more point about this, but this is some of the functionality that we're going to want to use. Um, here, the, the condition that we're going to specify is just going to be um, A1, which is this 54 over here. Um, so, and then I'm going to take this formula and I'm going to drag it down to every single um, uh, every single corresponding cell in column B, and thus for 54, this says we have two items. Um, over here for 54, we have two items, but 45 occurs once, four, uh, 345 occurs once, and 467 occurs once, and that's just because we're saying count if of all of the items in this range uh, for the value in A5. So that's the count if function. Now. Um, over here in column A, this is where we're going to want to have uh, our random numbers. And over here in column B, this is going to be a count within this range of how many times that random number occurs. Ideally, we should have only one of each random number. That's the whole point of this exercise, to end up with five unique random numbers. Uh, we could calculate this by using the sum function. That's the sum function. Um, and so if we say that the sum, right, let's say here in A7, if we say that uh, this is the sum of B1 through B5, so that the value of that is 7, if the value of this was 5, then we would know that there was a 1 in each of these cells, um, and thus we ended up with unique random numbers. So uh, we could say that the sum of B1 through B5 is equal to 5, 
and that in this case will give us false. Um, and we could also check if it's not equal to. The way we do not equal to is less than greater than 5, and then we'll have the value of true. Okay. So far, so good. So now, let's put in our um, formulas for calculating the random numbers and for ensuring that the random numbers are actually unique. Um, firstly, uh, the formula that we have in column B is already um, accurate because um, it's basically looking at the values in column A and checking whether they're unique. So what we have over here equals count if of this range, A1 through A5, comma A1, um, this is a good formula. And then I just clicked and dragged this formula down to all of these other entries. So for column B, we, uh, we're fine. What about for column A? For column A here, instead of just typing in these values as I have them typed right here, I'd like to actually have uh, formulas. So let's start simply. Let's, uh, let's start with just generating those random numbers. And we're not going to try to impose some kind of restriction on the uniqueness yet. Well, we'll type, we'll say the same formula that we typed beforehand equals int of rand of uh, nothing times the maximum in that range. Let's, let's say we're trying to get numbers between 1 and 100, so times 100 plus uh, one and the parentheses that's going to ca uh, that's going to um, truncate whatever number we have to, to a regular integer to just the whole number component of it and thus we'll get a 93 in this specific cell and then I could click and drag and I'll get a whole bunch of other random numbers I could continuously recalculate these um, right now it says uh, false over here in other words they're all they're, they're all happen to be unique they're all unique, they're all unique, and if I'm only generating a couple of numbers, it's in most cases, they're going to be unique. But here, I just continued, I continuously pressed F9 to recalculate all those random numbers, and on occasion, I could end up with a number which is not unique. Over here, you see we had two instances of calculating 45. We had, uh, basically, in calculating the number, it was uh, something like 0.44, we multiplied by 100, uh, 0.44 something something something. Uh, we multiplied by 100 and we got 45 point something, uh, 44 point something, and added one. Uh, so we ended up with 45 two times. Um, and thus, over here within this condition, we see that the sum of this is not equal to five. So that uh, that was true, and so we didn't um, uh, we didn't have unique numbers. And you continue calculating it. Um, it's every single time I'm calculating here I'm getting false but eventually here we got again 71 it occurs twice and especially if you're calculating more than five numbers let's say you're calculating uh, 50 uh, random numbers it's quite possible that you'll get a duplicate someplace um, but what we want is we want actually unique random numbers so this formula as we have it doesn't cut it um, what we want to do is we would like to uh, you see column B over here is dependent on column A because it's looking at the range of numbers and it's looking at the criteria but we'd also in calculating column A we want to look at column B because we want to see whether the numbers calculated so far um, have any duplicates um, and so A relies on B, B relies on A that's going to be a circular reference, a deliberate circular reference um, and the way that we will do it is uh, we'll take the formulas we have so far equals int of rand, uh, uh, rand times 100 plus 1 and we're going to modify a little bit and we're going to ask um, we're just going to ask whether the sum of all these numbers in column B is, e is not equal to 5 if it's not equal to 5 then uh, it means it's a number greater than 5, we want to then call the random function uh, because we want to calculate some random number. Otherwise, uh, the number that we currently have 
is perfectly valid. So it's uh, so a1 is either going to be itself the number calculated so far that say a1 is going to be equal to a1 if all of these numbers do end up being five. Otherwise, if they if the, the sum of all these numbers is not five, we're going to call this interand of 100 plus one. So uh, we'll just write it like this: equals if of uh, this. Let's get rid of this. Equals if of the sum of the range b1 through b5. Um, now I'm going to actually drag this formula, so I don't want the range to shift. I'm going to press F4 to make it an absolute reference. So if the sum of dollar sign b dollar sign one colon dollar sign b dollar sign five, if the sum of that is not equal to five. Um, so, in other words, if it's not equal to 5, uh, but it, rather it's some no number other than 5, it's going to be, uh, we could have probably just said greater than 5, then um, if it's not equal to 5, we would like to calculate a random number. So we'll say comma. Okay, so that's the value, if the value is true, so then we need to take the int of rand times a hundred uh, so uh, times 100 um, plus 1 and the parentheses so so far we've calculated the random number that's if it's not equal to 5 so in other words so far we have no unique numbers we want to recalculate uh, once again a random number otherwise We'll just say a1, which is ourself, we've calculated a valid number. And parentheses for the entire if, and so that gives me a number. Um, and then, you can copy this, and paste it to the other cells, and uh, then we have a bunch of, of uh, the, the formula changes for each one. See, this is still referring to the same absolute range, uh, but here it's looking at a3, um, the next one is looking at a4, etc. And so like this, it'll just keep recalculating um, until it has this unique uh, number, right? A, a unique set of numbers. And then uh, once we've done that, we uh, have a bunch of uh, random numbers that were uh, between a range of 1 and 100 uh, that are guaranteed to be unique.